Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to talk about how to install Jellyfin Media Server on your TerraMaster NAS. A number of you may have purchased a TerraMaster NAS over the last few years and you did so due to it having an excellent um, hardware value point. Now you've bought it because it's quite cost effective and it does have quite a lot of bells and whistles and features of the software and applications but when it comes to multimedia I would say that some of the premium applications out there from the likes of Plex, MB and indeed Jellyfin aren't really as well represented as you might like and the TerraMaster application for multimedia doesn't have metadata scraping it doesn't have a lot of that stuff doesn't have a client application kind of reputation for phones tablets TVs and more and a number of you although you're going to buy a TerraMaster NAS may use a number of these third-party applications and Jellyfin is probably one of the best out there when it comes to harnessing all of your existing database of information your database of tv shows movies ebooks music photos and more and as well as scraping all that metadata it allows you to really customize the media server and access to your hardware resources to make the most of it however if you go through the available applications from TerraMaster you will notice that you do not have a Jellyfin installation. Now, you can, if you want, use the Docker application. Within the Docker application, you can go ahead and go to the registry, and you can start finding Jellyfin in here and install Jellyfin as a container, if you choose, which isn't going to be for everyone. Jellyfin is a container does have inherent downsides there first and foremost it is a little bit more complex to set up you have to set up quite regimented access to certain files and folders and uh, allow uh, certain permissions as well as within the container first time assigning space and it's just a lot more kind of back and forth uh, in creation of your Jellyfin server this way and that's why there's a really easy way that's now become available and that is utilizing the TerraMaster community page and from there using some of these third-party apps now you can add the um, container sorry not the container the third-party app center in the app center here and then on the left hand side seeing the community apps tab something you can enable in some of those settings but I would say even if you do install it all it does is go directly to that app center and what you need to do is either use the search functionality to find uh, Jellyfin or use the links in the description but I will highlight that you're technically going to need two apps you're going to need the Jellyfin application there and you're going to need the FFMPEG application both of these apps are what you're going to need to install Jellyfin for the first time now, before going any further, a few things to, to highlight just before we go into the installation. First and foremost, in order to download from the Third Party App Center, you will need to create an account, which is free. But I will say, unlike a lot of app centers out there, their app center does have uh, a few limitations. You can download apps, but once you've downloaded two apps, you only get two app installations a month, and you have to create an account if you want to use more. Now, I get it. People that are creating these apps, they need to be funded. You need to fund content creators. But given that Synology and QNAP have their own QNAP club and Synology, uh, Synology community, uh, you know, um, retrospectively as an app center, it's just a bit of a pain for some to have to create accounts and uh, have membership subscriptions if you want lots of apps. The reason I raise this is if you go onto this app center and start downloading things willy-nilly, you won't be able to download the two apps that you need without creating an account or waiting a week. So make sure when you create an account to download these two apps. It's really, really important because if you install a third one, you're only going to be able to uh, download two apps a week for free and you'll use up one of your free spaces. And you have to either create a new account via VPN or something or wait a week. So next thing to remember is you're going to have to make sure you uh, download the right application so go into the control panel of your nas and from here you can find out more information in your system tab and that will tell you the version and the build number of tos normally you can just make sure you download uh, either the version 5 or the version 4 depending on your system and what os you're running of tos so as you can see i was running version 5 so make sure you download a version 5 version of jellyfin and again you can just click that download button there and within ffmpg make sure once again you find the version 5 
version of that file and the latest version depending on the architecture of your system. Now, why are we installing FFMPG? That's because Jellyfin, as good as it is um, as the multimedia database, when it comes to the streaming and the efficient kind of distribution of multimedia, FFMPEG is by far one of the best out there. And it's one that pretty much everyone recommends alongside Jellyfin. So do bear that in mind. And I would recommend downloading both of those apps. Now, when you've done that, head back into the application center and then from there, go into the settings there and then select install application manually. Click the folder. It will go to your download. And as you can see, I downloaded Jellyfin and FFMPG. So I'm gonna install Jellyfin first, click open. And now it will locally upload that installer and install Jellyfin for us here. And then shortly, Jellyfin will be installed in our system. It might warn us that we're using a third-party application. That's really, really important because you are installing apps that aren't on the official database of apps in the App Center. So bear in mind that you should have your backups in order and don't go punching holes in your network and remote access via like the router and your firewall unless you know what you're doing. But we'll talk about that a little bit more later on in the installation of Jellyfin. But once this is finished, we'll now then download FFMPEG because we'll need that in conjunction with Jellyfin to make the most out of our Jellyfin uh, uh, media server running on the Terramaster NAS. So as you can see, it is it's gone ahead and added it to the new range of apps on our Terramaster. So now we go ahead in again, and this time we're gonna find FFMPG, click open. And once again, it's now going to install FFMPG. I'm gonna fast forward to the completion of that installation. So when that was completed, you should now see that the Jellyfin application and the FFMPEG application are available on your desktop there. So the next thing you need to do is go into Jellyfin. Now, the first thing you'll see when you zoom in a little closer is Jellyfin has stopped. It names the version you're running, whether it's got auto boot, and it mentions that Modbase 1 app is not installed. Predominantly, this is an additional option that you can go with to configure a lot of settings in the background, and it may be handy depending on your setup there, whether you should go ahead and install it. You can learn more about it on this page, as well as more by going for the links in that Modbase. But just bear in mind, this is gonna be a third download, another pain in the bum with that Terramaster community place. I think it's a great idea I don't really like this membership thing but for now as soon as you've got that up and running what you need to do is go into application control and select start module and now it will start up the jellyfin application and as you can see from the bottom it does make recommendations with regards to how to change that transcoding options there as well as setting up the ffmpeg path there if you're not using the additional app but for now you can go ahead and either click this interface or click it and open in a new tab. This will allow you to begin the configuration and initialization of Jellyfin. Select the language appropriate to your area. From there, give your server a name. Now do bear in mind with the username that although you are creating an access point for Jellyfin into your NAS and for the user to access this server, don't duplicate existing credentials that you're using on the NAS. Go ahead and use brand new ones for Jellyfin, as this will ensure that anyone that you give access to for access to your Jellyfin account, you're not gonna accidentally also give that client device the same credentials to get into your NAS in a meaningful and potentially damaging way. From here, start creating your libraries. So in this case, I go to the media data for uh, movies. So I'm gonna select movies. Then I'm gonna click the plus symbol, which will then give me access to the files and folders on this NAS. I select volume one. I find where I've put data on this NAS. So I've already put multimedia on this NAS. So I can go ahead and find it. And then I will go ahead and start adding these folders one by one. As you add each of these directories for your individual media, you will have extra settings you need to go for in order to create an ideal Jellyfin meta, uh, metadata filled server. So go ahead again, select the language, which will become useful later on when it's doing the crawl. The same goes for your region. After that, 
go ahead how you want the system to be uh, rescanned for metadata imp uh, not meta for metadata and indexing make sure you tick the boxes to the appropriate database create an nfo file there which is kind of like a document that details all of the data where it lives and indexing the file all that background stuff and of course you can choose whether to save the scraped metadata locally to your system rather than just keeping it there in the cache so go ahead click ok and now we we have a movies directory for our server go ahead and add all of the individual directories moving forward for the individual media types i'll join you in just a moment after i've added all of the uh, individual access directories on my TerraMaster. Once you've added all the appropriate folders you think you're going to need, go ahead and click Next. After this, select the de regional default for your metadata, as this will make sure to scrape the metadata appropriate to your region. So again, whether it's language or location, this will make all the difference. After that, click Next, and from here, this is an important point about security. Firstly, you can choose whether you want remote access to be established on your server. Next, do you want to give Jellyfin the option to start automatically mapping the ports, which can lead to changes in your firewall as well as uh, local ports for access uh, over UPnP. Personally, I wouldn't play with these if you don't know what you're doing, and the default access is going to be great for a start. Wait, sh wait until you've got your Jellyfin server up and running before you start playing with remote access settings, and never do this unless you know what you're doing. We're going to do a video soon on utilizing tail scale on the TerraMaster NAS platform, and do stay tuned for that, as it does make a very easy way to establish remote access to your system, but more on that in a future video. For now, click Next. After that, you're done. Click Finish, and the system is already in the process of crawling your NAS for all of the media and that metadata. Go ahead and log in with the credentials you created. And remember, these are the credentials you're going to need if you want to create um, client access on a phone, a tablet, a laptop, a TV, whatever, into the system. Go ahead and sign in. From here, you can see that the system is already starting to crawl all of that metadata and uh, crawl all of the media as well as scrape the metadata from online and start applying some of the information and the descriptions to some of these files here. And that will take a little bit of time depending on your media collection to add all of that. But before we go any further, uh, before we end today's video, just a couple of little tips. First and foremost, head into this dashboard area here via the NAS desktop and for now, go into the DLNA tab. Because if you plan on accessing the um, Jellyfin media server on your TerraMaster NAS on the local area network and never outside your house, and you don't want to go to the trouble of installing client applications on your devices, or that those devices don't support uh, a um, ready-to-go client app and you don't want to create a container, you can go ahead and enable DLNA media server access. This means that the NAS will appear on your local area network Similarly to media server access support and DLNA and uh, universal plug and play in most devices in your home, allowing you to access this in a breadcrumb fashion. Lastly, head over to the playback tab so we can talk about hardware acceleration quickly. Now, depending on the power of your TerraMaster NAS, sometimes you'll be playing a file such as a high dense 4k version of a movie that perhaps you're not going to be able or want to play on a destination client device what does that mean well say you own a 4k version of avatar good for you but you're going to watch it on an old android phone around a relative's house or you're on a train station with limited internet connection you still want to watch the file but you know streaming that massive file over either a limited connection or a small device is just not viable and in that scenario you need to reshape the file otherwise known as re-encoding transcoding conversion all of these amount to the same thing now when you do that and you do it on the fly your nas will have to work harder to get the job done if the feature is not supported on your local device to reshape the file now in order to do that more efficiently you can push the nas to perform hardware acceleration that's when the hardware on board be it a graphics card embedded gra integrated graphics on the cpu or just raw power can be utilized via one of uh, several supported encode means to reshape that file more efficiently in the case of the TerraMaster NASes, in the most cases 
Hardware Acceleration API VAAPI driver and Intel Quick Sync to a slight lesser degree are your options and you can select that and then select the format you want to allow the system to utilize hardware acceleration. So in the case of HEVC, a far more powerful and efficient codec but unfortunately is licensed if you tick it there playing HEVC media will result in the system being able to reshape for that file the same goes if you want to use the more modern AV1 compression which is open source and you you either don't have the ability to play AV1 locally on your client or your uh, NAS system is just better off reshaping the file you can tick it there and then scroll to the bottom and you can click save and there you go it enables hardware acceleration and if you're playing files that may be a little trickier than others to play on your client hardware the nas can now use its hardware to get the job done but that's it you've now created a jellyfin media server on your TerraMaster NAS and you can start using one of the many client applications available across the internet in order to play it. Now, I've done a whole comparison of Plex, Jellyfin and MB over on the NAS Compares blog and in a video earlier in 2023 and I recommend you check those out. But otherwise, I really hope you found, hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments if it did. Otherwise, there's links in the description to other TerraMaster guides and other than this, I will see you next time.